Hey friends, what's up? Ash here. Welcome to Gent Sense. Hope that you're having an awesome day or evening or whatever time it is. Let's talk about 10 different fragrances today that will wow a crowd. We're talking about some great people pleasing attention grabbing fragrances. Very nice smelling. Most of these better suited for fall and winter. A couple summer ones thrown in here too though. Niche and designer both. We got a little bit of something for everybody. But the catch here is that these fragrances are a little bit lesser known whether they're from a lesser known house or from a really well-known house, but not one of the big releases. Either way, these are fragrances that are flying under that radar who really the only people that know about them are people like you and me, people in the know. So uh, don't tell your friends unless they also were in the know and then they already know, so who cares? So let's jump into it. Let's talk about it. Some scents that'll wow a crowd. So if you're shopping at goodoldluckyscent.com, you got your eyeballs, your peepers on an indie or niche fragrance, and you want to buy it from Lucky Scent and also scoop yourself some of those little uh, itty bitty tiny free samples that they give with each purchase, then use the code 10 gents. That will save you 10% off your order. Or let's say you'd rather shop at Twisted Lily or maxaroma.com. Well, at those websites, you would use the code gents10 and that will also give you 10% off. I will also link each one of these in the description in case you want to check them out. Let's get it kicked off with the Creed fragrance. Yeah, the House of Creed. Uh, they're most well known, of course, for Aventus and Green Hours Tweed. Oh, and Aventus Cologne. Oh, and Aventus for her. Uh, where's the next Aventus? I need it. Where's Aventus Extrait or something? They do have other fragrances, believe it or not. And they have some fragrances that smell darn good. And one of those fragrances is this one, Arolfa. Now, Arolfa is going to be a spring summertime fragrance, but it's not your typical spring summertime fragrance. This one is extremely classy and gentlemanly, sophisticated. Huge note breakdown on this one. It's got just about everything you could think of to put in a fragrance note breakdown for a summertime scent. Citrus, yeah, it's got that bergamot, lime, and lemon. But because that's too boring, they also put melon in there. Give it a little bit of a different flair. It has green notes. It has fresh spices. It has woods. It has florals. And of course, like most Creed fragrances, it has ambergris. Actually, a pretty good amount of ambergris in the base here. So Arolfa is a scent that you can wear in high heat situations, but you can also wear it to the office or more formal situations, and it will absolutely crush it and have you smelling like a million bucks. So we're starting off with Creed's Arolfa, a great change of pace for a summertime scent that will have you smelling amazing. I'm going to follow that up with another niche fragrance, another spring summertime niche fragrance, but this one quite a bit different from Arolfa. It's from Olfactive Studio and it's called Still Life in Rio. There was also another spring summertime fragrance before this one by the same house called Still Life. I've always really loved this fragrance. It has a lot of citrus in here, including yuzu, which is a note that I feel like is underutilized a little bit. Also has a boozy sweetness in here from rum. You have ginger and mint combining with the citrus off the top, so it's gonna have this great liveliness, but then it does have a little more density to the sweetness than most spring summertime scents. The little tropical feel to the fragrance makes it stand out a little bit more against its peers, and it's an absolute stunner for high heat situations. Really though, you can wear this just about year round in my opinion. I know a lot of people would maybe not agree with that, say it's not a great winter time scent, but it smells nice during the winter also. Olfactive Studio is a house that's always really intrigued me. Just the whole aesthetic of the brand where they have a professional photograph, then they pair it up with the fragrance, trying to kind of complete the idea of this scent for you, giving you a visual medium to look at along with the fragrance. Sometimes it works really well. Fragrances like Still Life and Rio, I think the image, the fragrance, they come together really nicely. Uh, Chambray Noir, same thing. Uh, but then some of the other fragrances are kind of a, a miss for me. So it's a house that's really cool, very interesting, but some of their fragrances don't work quite as well. And then the ones that do, they're real nice. Let's keep it going with this kind of spring summer thing and then we'll get into the uh, fall and winter time fragrances. So next up is Azaro's Ginger Lover. Ginger Lover, once upon a time, not that long ago actually, was pretty cheap at discounters. You could pick this up for about 25 bucks 
and that was a really good deal. But those times have passed and this fragrance is a little harder to find nowadays. So the price at discounters has crept up and I think now it's in like the $50 range. It's basically doubled in value, at least based on what they're selling it for. This one, very simple, only three notes, lime, vetiver, and then of course, ginger. So they kept it about as simple as you could possibly make it. The opening here, which really is the focal point of the fragrance, it carries on for quite a while, is quite similar to Loam by Yves Saint Laurent or even Loam Ultime. So it smells absolutely stunning when you first spray this on and that opening will carry on for quite a while until you get to a very clean vetiver dry down, a nice woody dry down. Okay, let's get into some cooler weather scents with Ultra Red from Paco Rabanne. Interesting bottle design here, kind of a love it or hate it. So you squeeze it here on the little light uh, or what's supposed to look like a light. It's not actually a light, just in case you didn't know. And then uh, shoots out of the atomizer there up top. So you kind of hold it like a staple gun or a stapler and you just squeeze away. This is a flanker to ultraviolet. And uh, this bad boy right here was discontinued a while back and it was commanding crazy prices on eBay, upwards of $200, you know, $300 for a bottle. And then it came back into stock at discounters. It did sell out from all the discounters though here recently. Uh, but I think either Fragrance Buy or Fragrance Net has some uh, still yet in stock, but it's gone everywhere else. So I don't know if it's gonna like vanish again, but you can still find it for a decent price. So that's why it's in the video. I usually try not to feature stuff that's crazy, crazy priced and discontinued because then people yell at me. So Ultra Red, this smells a little bit similar to Ultra Zest from Mugler. And that one is discontinued and crazy expensive. So this fragrance gives you a fantastic, very sweet citrus kind of gourmandy scent, quite thick with the sweetness, but very appealing. Big compliment puller, great performance. I love Ultra Red. I actually bought multiple bottles of this stuff, so I have backups just in case. After that, let's talk about a cheapy Animal Gold from Animal. And this is a, a very, I think cheap looking bottle. I don't think it looks great. The cap is not nice. The atomizer is not nice. So if you know nothing about the scent, you may see this and think, uh, that doesn't look good. But it actually smells really nice. Yeah, especially in the air. As you're moving around and you catch a whiff of it, you'll be like, whoa, what is that? Oh yeah, the animal. Up close, it's fine too, but in the air, it just really shines. It's a warm, spicy, ambery fragrance with some faint similarities to fragrances like Paco Rabanne's One Million. A lot of tonka in here, like a substantial amount, and also a little lavender in the top, trying to give a, a slight balance of freshness when you first spray the scent on. Animal Gold, obviously going to be completely overlooked because it's from a house that most people are not looking for. And on top of that, it's a lesser known cheapy bargain bin flanker, but it is much better than you would expect. Next up, we're going back to the realm of niche with Widian's London. Now, going from the last bottle to this one is a big difference because this bottle looks amazing. It's elegant, it's heavy in the hand, it feels expensive, it looks expensive, and the quality of the fragrance is quite high as well. This is a leather fragrance and it does have raspberry, so, yeah, in case you don't know what I'm getting at, it's a little bit similar to Tuscan Leather from Tom Ford. You know, it's in the same family, same style. There's also vanilla, amber, oud, and violet in here. And actually I would say London is smoother than Tom Ford's Tuscan Leather. It's not as in your face. It's easier to wear. It smells richer. It smells more elegant. And I'd say it's more versatile as well. With that violet, when you first spray this on, you may get a little hint of kind of a petrol vibe from the fragrance, you know, a little bit, but it's it's not overwhelming at all. It's not like Dior Fahrenheit just right in your face. And actually, I think it makes the scent even better. It gives it more depth, more nuance. So London, that one in cold weather, whew, that will have you smelling amazing. Let's keep it going with leather. Next up, Ferragamo's Spicy Leather. Now I can tell you unequivocally, I'm not a massive fan of their change away from the Womo line 
to this leather line. Not that this is a bad line, it's just I hate to see a fragrance line that has fragrances in it that I think are just really, really well done. The original Ferragamo Uomo, Uomo signature. I think those are great designer scents for cool weather. And I hate to see a house just kind of abandon what they've done and go like, we're not even gonna tell people what we're doing with this, we're just gonna ignore it and then start something new. So I don't really like that that happened with this leather line. And these are also not super easy to find in the United States, at least if you're talking about at discounters. Now, I guess that is kind of cheap. That's a cheap way to view it because you can buy it on Ferragamo's website, so you can find it. Uh, so I guess I need to take that back. It's just, you can't find it crazy cheap. And again, that's on us. You know, we, we shouldn't be cheapskates all the time, I guess. But this one, Spicy leather is great. This is the best one that I have smelled in this new line, and it ain't close. The spices in here capture your attention right away. The saffron off the top works wonders. Smells great. Little sweetness in there with the spice as well. The leather that's in here comes across more like an actual fleshed out leather accord as compared to some of the other Ferragamo leathers where the leather is more so just kind of like a window dressed, more typical designer, versatile blue-ish type scent. But with this one, at least when you smell it, there's actually some leather there, like for real. And that makes it to me anyway, smell much higher quality, like a more premium product than the other Ferragamo fragrances in this line. And also just the look of the bottle is sick too. That fragrance though, it can be hard to find. Like I said, if you're talking about discounters, I got mine from Fragrance Buy and that's the only time I've seen them stock this stuff. So who knows? Let's try to speed things up a little bit here. Next up is Xenia Intenso. Now this bottle looks cheap. It feels cheap. Nothing about this feels premium. You know, we go from the Ferragamo, the Widian, and now we're back into a uh, cheapy realm over here. And this is another one that for a time was a little bit difficult to find at discounters, but it's back in stock again pretty much everywhere. So that's good. It smells similar to Armani Code Eau de Toilette. It's a little bit in that style. It also has cardamom, it has iris, a little bit of citrus, but not too much. Just that sort of splash that you get off the top when you first spray it on. And then also a little bit of woodiness, a little bit of musk as it dries down. So you could almost think of this as like um, Armani Code Eau de Toilette though. Yeah, pretty similar to that. Really nice evening fragrance. Good for fall and winter, also early spring. Next up, one from Chopard. This one is Oud Malaki. I have talked about this before, but I always find these Chopard bottles very interesting because when you look at them, they look really nice. They feel heavy, they look premium. And then they just, you know, slap a little sticker on the front there and call it a day. And sometimes depending on the bottle you get, the sticker might be, you know, misaligned a little bit. So it's, it's strange. It's like this meeting of cheap and expensive looking all in one bottle, but that is just the bottle. If we're talking about the fragrance, it's a meeting of expensive smelling and high quality smelling. It just, there's nothing cheap about it, is what I mean to say. Tobacco, oud, wood, spices. Again, a little touch of citrus, a little touch of lavender in the top. It is warm, rich, decadent. It's an amazing scent, once again, for cool weather. It is the type of fragrance that maybe falls into a more specific niche as to when you would wear it. It's the type of fragrance that smells more for like special occasions, but it is an outstanding, high quality, classy men's fragrance that will absolutely have you standing out. And then last but not least, we have one from Kajal and it is Ohm. And this is the only fragrance that I do own from the brand. This one caught uh, a bit of hype when it came out, you know, people were pretty excited about this fragrance. And I will say it is immensely wearable. Like it's very versatile, easy to pull off in cool weather. It's one of those niche fragrances that has a little bit of a designer sensibility to it in the sense that it's not made to be maybe hyper artistic, but it is made to be worn. So you have cashmere in here, a decent amount, tonka and vanilla. So again, you're gonna get that warmth, that sweetness from those two notes melding together, a little citrus off the top, and then a heaping dose of cardamom as you work through the mid of the fragrance. You're gonna have that warm, sexy spiciness going on. With this one, you have to have your expectations properly set. If you're going into it thinking that it's going to be, as I mentioned before, this hyper artistic niche fragrance, maybe it's not for you. But if you're looking for something that has very high quality with that wearability and that compliment factor, yeah, check it out. I actually had not busted this out for a while, 
pulled it off the shelf, sprayed it on, had my wife check it out. Uh, I had her smell it and I was like, yeah, this thing was hyped a while back. And she was just like, oh yeah, I see why. So <laughs> that one, not too many people nowadays gonna be wearing it. Not too many people in general because it is a smaller niche house, but for sure that will work wonders. So that will do it for me, guys. I wanna thank you for hanging with me here until the end. Thank you so much. Please stay safe out there and I'll see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.